Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Ainsley's Gold Silver Standard Insights, where we discuss the morning's news posted on ainsleybullion.com.au. And we also do amazing interviews with amazing people. And today we have Nikos Kavalis. Now, Nikos is coming to us from Singapore, and he's a founding partner of Metals Focus. Now, they are unquestionably uh, the world's preeminent metals market analysts. And Nikos has been there for nearly 19 years, had 19 years experience, I should say, working as a, working as a metals analyst and a strategist, of course, and including places like the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, and the then GFMS, which is now known as Thomson Reuters. Nikos, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be here and I look forward to our chat. Excellent. Now, what we do here is we always share the screen. Uh, for the morning's news posted on ainsleybullion.com.au. And of course, I'll, I'll put a link below as well uh, to that news so people watching can follow along. And the topic today is India soaks up physical silver as the COMEX bleed continues. Chris, over to you. Oh, thanks, Joe. And it's great to have Nikos here. Um, silver is something we love to talk about here on Insights whenever we get the chance. And I can't think of anyone better to help us analyze the current market than Nikos. So thank you very much for joining us today. And I'm really looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts on what I considered to be some fascinating news and numbers. The quoted figures in the article were quite mind-blowing to me, with India importing what amounts to a quarter of global mine production. But when you back this up, with numbers from the physical reserves out of comics, it feels like we could be setting up for some explosive price action ahead. I suppose the first thing I'd love for you to talk us through, Nikos, is those comics reserves. They have been declining since early 2021. What do you think is causing this and, and is it likely to continue? Yeah, so look, there's, there's a couple of uh, two key factors, really. I mean, one of them is the fact that physical demand is healthy. It's very strong. Um, uh, uh, the way we see the market is that uh, silver has been in deficit, was in deficit last year, will be in deficit again this year. So when you have a deficit, you need to eat into above ground stocks, which are sort of stored somewhere in the world. Um, Comic is one of the, let's say, pools of such stockpiles. So from my perspective, I think it's natural to see reported inventories around the globe declining um, up to uh, when you have these market conditions. Now, when it comes to comics in particular, we have to also um, keep in mind what happened before 2021. Uh, in particular, what happened in 2020 in the aftermath of the, you know, the first few months of the uh, pandemic exploding mm -hmm. and what happened to global supply chains and what this resulted in, in terms of uh, EFP prices. Uh, EFP is the exchange for physical. It's effectively the price difference between spot, physical metal, local London metal, the global silver price that you see on your screen normally, and the price of COMEX futures. And because of supply chain frictions um, and other factors, this EFP exploded, and that resulted in a lot of metal being moved from other depositories into COMEX depositories. So in a sense, we, you know, the declines that we're seeing are also to some extent a return to more normal uh, levels of inventory in the COMEX, which traditionally is not a very physical um, market. Right. So, so that makes sense, I suppose, um, and, and takes a little bit of the shine off those numbers. But um, it's not just COMEX declines, though, because We've also seen reports of falling inventories in the London vaults. Will this continue as well, do you think, or is it a similar situation? And and do those falling reserves ultimately mean that we are running out of silver? Look, there is no doubt that um, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, if we look at uh, LBMA reported vault, lo London vault figures, uh, you're also seeing a very sharp decline. And there is no doubt that when you have deficits, they have to be fed from something. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just to give you some perspective, um, the way we see the world is uh, back between 2010 and 2020, it was very much a, a structural surplus situation for the silver market. Uh, pretty much, uh, let's say out of those 11 years, only three of them saw deficits and they weren't very big deficits. Now we're moving from that situation to a situation where between 2021, uh, last year, 
and 2026, where our uh, latest, let's say, published forecasts go out, we see the market in a perpetual structural uh, deficit. Uh, and what we're seeing now, we believe that we will continue to see, and it's inevitable. I mean, you can't have deficits without uh, stockpiles being reduced. And, you know, the two biggest pools of stocks, um, certainly identifiable stocks, are uh, London and New York. So yes, you're absolutely, I, I, I certainly expect this um, will continue for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, um, now to your question, are we running out of silver? I don't think we're there yet. Look, there's no doubt that stocks are always finite by definition, right? Um, mm -hmm. What we have is what we have. Um, I think if you, if you combine COMEX stocks and uh, London stocks, I think we still have quite a lot of silver sloshing around. And I think this is probably why, even though you're seeing some signs of tightness in uh, regional markets and certainly some signs of tightness in specific products, whether this is small form products or high purity silver, which the industrial users need, um, the fact that we still have, if you look at the global pool of silver, um, we still have quite a lot of metal. It's probably why the price hasn't done uh, better than what mm. we've seen. Yep. Okay, so I suppose I can take that as you do see further tightening of supplies ahead, no. but I, there's two without sides. Without a shadow of a doubt, without a yeah, shadow so... of a doubt, over the next two years, uh, look, if you're having, I don't know, just to give you, I'm not going to give you all our figures because, you know, people should pay for them. Um, yes. But just as an indication, over the next few years, we see um, deficits amounting from anything between 59 and 86 million ounces per year. So, so that that's not insignificant. Yeah. No, that, that is uh, very significant. That's more than 5% of global market every year consistently for the next five years. So, you know, that gives you a perspective of uh, what we'll need to eat into from global stockpiles. Absolutely. So I suppose we've talked about the supply side of that equation, but how does demand fit into this as well? Because that really is the other the other half of, of the equation of overall the overall market, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And this is really why we've moved from this perma surplus to perma deficit uh, situation. I mean, it's very much a demand story. Um, again, um, you know, we are we are analysts, so we like we think that everything we have to say is the best thing in the world. So again, I'll reference back to our numbers. Um, if we look at what levels of supply we're seeing between 2010 and 2020, and what we're seeing in the next few years, the increase is marginal. We're looking at maybe a few percent, three, four percent more supply on average per year. In contrast, if you take, um, and I did this before we, um, so I could come up with some clever numbers. If you look at um, demand, let's say between 2020, 2020 and 2010 and 2020, and then again, demand between 2021 and 2026, we see a 14% increase. Industrial demand alone is about 20% higher in the next few years than uh, it would have been the previous five, 10 years. Um, and, and what are some of those? You're going to ask me what's causing it, right? Yeah, that's a, that's the question everyone wants to know. Sure. Well, look, a big part of it is industrial, uh, the industrial sector. Um, this is uh, a, a silver is silver's high conductivity is uh, lends itself to uh, many industrial applications and mm -hmm. particularly green energy applications. Solar power is a huge. Uh, source of demand for silver. And the important point for when it comes to solar is that uh, generally speaking, you have two opposing th trends, right? The growth in absolute demand of the final product and, you know, R&D departments to constantly try to use less and yet less, trying to use less and less and less of whatever metal they need. The thing that makes the solar industry very interesting for silver at the moment is that from a technical perspective, R&D departments are reaching uh, the limits of what they can thrift. So obviously every year they use a little bit less per cell, um, but this decline is getting more and more challenging. So unless they come up with a, you know, a technological breakthrough, the gains that we expect to see in solar 
um, farm installations, solar panels on top of houses will translate into more silver ounces. Electrification of uh, cars is another huge area and uh, electrification, direct electrification, so switching to battery vehicles, but also having more high tech uh, equipment in your car, whether this is a more touch screens, sensors that, um, and actuators that, you know, make things move in your car, et cetera. That, all, that, all these components use silver. Um, finally, last but not least, silver has been benefiting in recent years from other metals being just too expensive. Um, a lot of silver pastes and powders are a blend of silver and palladium. Um, and palladium is so expensive that uh, manufacturers are trying to reduce it as much as possible. And that has to some extent benefited silver too. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's a a lot there. Yeah. A lot of different um a lot of sources. So it's quite rounded when you put the supply and demand side together. Um, finally, I I couldn't let you go without asking about those Indian import numbers. Twenty five percent of all global silver production was the headline, and that that immediately caught my attention based on the annualized figures to July. What is driving this, and and can it be sustained going forward? Do you think? So, um. Can it be, let me ask, answer the second part first. Um, can it be sustained going forward? Look, obviously the July number that we saw was you know, out of this world. Um, those kind of levels can't be sustained. Um, it, it would be impossible to sustain these levels. Can high import levels be sustained? Absolutely, we certainly think they, they, they can and they must. Uh, and this is, this is basically, this goes back to our assessment of the Indian market uh, from a fundamental demand perspective. We see a lot of strength in the market. Um, uh, no, and going beyond the 2021 to 2022 comparison, because 2021 was a disaster. 2022, at some point, we would have had to have supply chains uh, being replenished, inventories across the supply chain being replenished. Um, but generally speaking, we see a lot of health in the Indian market. Um, you know, in part, for example, again, looking at our forecast, in addition to industrial demand, we see pretty decent numbers from jewelry and silverware, and India is a very big contributor to that. Um, you have income growth expectations in the country. You have a natural cultural affinity towards silver. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you have a growing middle class, meaning that it's not just the average income that's, grow that's growing. You have a lot more people breaking through that threshold where they can go out and make discretionary uh, spending decisions. And all that, in our view, is uh, very positive for silver. So look, to cut a long story short, are we going to see more Julys? I think not. Um, uh, this was very much an inventory replenishment story. Um, are we going to see high levels uh, of imports? So uh, let's say six, seven, eight hundred um, uh, ton figures. I think that's, um, I think that that makes more, that is something that we can certainly expect. And and they're still, they're still big numbers. So uh, thank, thank you so much for sharing all those insights with us today, Nikos. Um, putting it all together, I think I'll be off to grab myself some more physical silver bars as soon as we finish up here. Um, there's always more details behind the headline numbers, of course, as you've pointed out. Um, but in my opinion, there's certainly plenty of reasons for me to remain bullish for the months ahead. Absolutely agreed. I could not agree more. And I've got to say, thank you so much, Nikos, uh, because it's very refreshing to hear this kind of talk about silver when we've had the recent sort of price action that we've that we've had. We're just showing the screen here. It's this is uh, silver in USD on the monthly time frame, and that's you know that high back in August of 2020 of what are we, you know, nearly 27 US dollars and we're hovering around about, you know, that $19.20 US mark. So it's always good to hear the uh, the, the positive uh, side of it. So I think I'm on the same bandwagon as yourself, Chris. I think uh, it's time to uh, buy a little bit more, I think, in, in my <laughs> humble opinion. And of course, where am I buying it from? ainsleybullion.com.au, uh, naturally. And also, and I, I will plug just while we're here, 
um, because you know we're into we do crypto here at Ainsley uh, as well. And if you want to skirt both worlds, if you want to uh, hop on, you know, both sides or be in the middle of the fence, I would actually consider taking a look at the gold silver standard uh, digital tokens, digital bullion tokens, the AGS and the AUS, I believe it is. So goldsilverstandard.com, that uh, brings gold and silver into the digital world. It's the ultimate suite of fully backed digital assets. So it's digital assets backed by real physical tokens, by, by real physical uh, gold and silver, I should say. So take a look into that. Of course, I'll get everyone to head over to the Discord channel. Now that's uh, discord.gg forward slash gold because what we'll be doing straight after we upload this video to YouTube, uh, one of us, whether it's Chris or Nikos, if he has time, or maybe even just myself, uh, will be in the Discord channel and we'll post this video and we'll continue the discussion. That's what we always like to do. We want to engage with the audience. So to finish up, thank you so much once again, Nikos, for joining us. That's been very, very thank uh, enlightening. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Chris, as always. And we'll see you next time. And as we Thanks, always sir. say here at the end, balance your wealth in an unbalanced world. Take care and we'll see you next time.